Hey everyone, I'm Platy and welcome back to Rosenberg. Today's episode will be a continuation of the train line we built almost two weeks ago now. We will build something around this stop right here. It will give this area purpose and create a place for people to be so they will end up using the train station. I had no clue what to build here. I was doubting between a liberal arts college and a financial district and I ended up going for the financial district. I want to wait for us to get to the next milestone so we can get a true university in town then, but we still need a fair bit more inhabitants before we actually get there. So we are building the financial district today. I looked around on Google Maps to look at financial districts. I checked out Canary Wharf and Lombard Street in London, Wall Street in New York City, Nariman Point in Mumbai and Marinucci in Tokyo. What I saw was, of course, loads of sleek skyscrapers, good public transport facilities, and surprisingly a fair amount of parks and places to stroll for a business chat. Especially Nariman Point inspired me as it's built right on a quay into the water. Financial districts should, in my opinion, look interesting, decadent and well manicured. Now, making things look well manicured is not really my thing, but I will try my best. But I should be able to make it look decadent and interesting. So I think that this district will be a nice challenge. My plan is to angle up this road from under the train tracks right here for an interesting change of road layout. This will bring us to the stock exchange which will go right here. And this road will then continue over the water which we will artificially put in. It will be a sort of canal design with an artificial pond at the end. This canal will be just for interesting features and the pond will be for some piers so people can gather there for lunch or after work drinks. Other than that, I want to put in a couple of residential uses and I might just add an entire block for that so we can apply the offices with hardworking people. And I will focus on getting a fair amount of skyscrapers in so we can create our first real central business district or CBD right here. I did say financial districts seem to be supplied by good public transport. I will be skipping that for today. Instead, we will do a public transport and road layout revamp next episode. So this was enough yapping for now. Let's get started. And here we are right next to our glass bypass station. This area is going to be completely transformed in just a little bit. Let's get started with our entry points into the district. I'm having a look at it from this angle because I want it to be sort of aimed toward the waterfall. I think it will eventually be blocked by buildings, but it's the guideline and the idea that counts. Having a look at it from above, I was doubting on whether I wanted large streets, but I decided against it as I imagine it would be just a bit too excessive and it takes up too much space. I would rather grab small roads and leave more room for the, for the pedestrian paths than grab the big ones, which are just all pavements. I'm immediately starting off with outlining where the water will go. I want some canals and a pond, but I want it all keyed off. I'm starting with outlining it by lowering the ground and giving it a rough general shape. I do want to put an island in so we can put something noteworthy on the island. This looks pretty rough still, but I think I should just get a water source in. Then we can add the keys and we can clean the edges up with Move It. So let's start off with this island bit here. I want it completely squared off, so we should check it from above in just a second. And then I'll continue with the surrounding keys. I am doubting a bit if I should key off this pond area to the right here as well. I could leave it as a sort of natural pond with a natural edge, but I don't think it fits in this area here, so I'm going to key it off as well. I'm going to delete all the trees and all the shrubs. So we can start with a clean slate. This shape probably looks a bit interesting, but I did think about it. The island is a nice spot to put a high skyscraper and we can use the rest of the island to put some paths and trees. 
This way tourists and business people can walk around and enjoy this space outside of the skyscraper as well. This weird bump out between the canals and the artificial pond is meant as a sort of bump out for another skyscraper to go. It would be in between the pond and the canals, but I don't want whatever to go here to feel insignificant, so deviating a bit from the established pattern can help make it feel more interesting. And the artificial pond, I've added it to create a bit more water surface so we can actually put in piers. I think the canal is just too short to put in piers, so instead I added the pond to facilitate that right there. This water structure will see a lot of bridges, but most of them will be pedestrian bridges. I want this to feel like a place where pedestrians have a right to be and are even catered towards. And actually, let's not grab the boring road. I want trees and a biking path. If this area is meant to be a sort of pedestrian focused area, then we should also allow biking. And part of the reason we are building here right now is because of the train station. So let's not forget to facilitate a direct connection from the train station into this area. You can connect paths and probably also roads to the other side of the train station and it will actually create a pedestrian connection automatically. I will put in pedestrian connections to this north to south road in just a second, but just to give myself some guidance as to where these pedestrian roads should go, I'm adding in a bridge to the island, or a tunnel apparently, which is also flooding. <laughs> okay, let's give that a try again. So from this angle you see the path connects onto the platform and let's try to align this road onto the island from this connection right here. And this honestly looks really good to me. It offers a super direct connection for pedestrians to get to the island and across, whereas cars have to go around a bit more. I feel like this is the sort of planning that makes people feel like their trips by public transport and by foot are faster than if they were to hop in the car. I do want to develop this road layout later in the episode, but I think I need to switch from road layouts to putting in some buildings so we can check if we're on the right track. The way Rosenberg is right now, most people will probably come from this little road under the train tracks, so I want to put the stock exchange in a significant location aimed towards the entry into the area. I'm adding this extra road here to create a triangle so the stock exchange can sit on this road. Let's put that in and I do need some anarchy and move it to get it in exactly the right spot. I love the look of this building. The faux Greekish pillars are a bit absurd, but I feel like that's exactly why this works so well. When you upgrade your investment status, this building gets progressively more ugly and tall. I'm not really excited about that. If anyone knows if I can just keep this building the way it looks now without losing the investment status, then do let me know in the comments. So I don't recall having watched anyone actively play the Financial Districts DLC. I do remember that I saw City Planner Place using this hack, which is just turn down the budget for, for example, industry, invest in the stocks that will then be super low, and then you turn up the budget all the way again and sell your high stocks. I wish it was that easy in real life as well. I would be retired by 30 then, but unfortunately that's not the case in real life. In City Skylines it is, so let me just apply that trick a couple of times until we get to the highest investment level. And look at that, this building is tall and a bit ugly, but it's our pride and joy because we are rich investment bankers in Rosenberg now. Let's continue this area so we can build this area according to our newfound riches. And let's start off right by putting in this amazing skyscraper. I like this one as it's tall but not too tall. It has a footprint that fits perfectly in this bump out and it has some benches and tables around it as well. The vision for this area is that it will have a lot of room for paths to walk around so the trees and tables will help everything fit in with one another. 
So next to this railway, I think I will just put offices. I do want some IT district offices somewhere in this area as well, as those are proper skyscrapers that you can just zone in. But I don't want them here. There's residential flats on the other side of this railway, and it would just be ridiculous to put in an IT tower that is like four or five times the height of these small flats. I'm not putting in any policies or district themes now, just so I can see if the basic zoning here is something that I like. We can make a decision later if we like the look or if we need to put in some districts or policies to make it look appropriate with the rest of the area. I want this road to have one or two skyscrapers as well. I don't want it to be too high, but more as landmarks and to kind of introduce the actual CBD that we will build here. And I quite like this Catalina Nest Tower. It's under 90 meters tall, so it's about the same height as the first tower in the residential part of the health campus. I think this fits really well here. And look at that, with the other tower on the other side of the road, it's clear that density is increasing and we are getting into the real central parts of the city. Let's formalize that by putting in a new district. And actually on the other side of the railway, I hadn't gotten around to putting a district in yet either, so let's put that in first. And then we can go ahead and make this one big district for now and call it the financial district, obviously. Back here with the big ugly building and some zones in offices, let's get a pedestrian path in from the stock exchange to the train station. It's a bit narrow here, so I think I'm happy to just put in a straight path. Let's expand the road network just a bit surrounding this island right here. I think I want to just go around and then connect up with paths where it makes sense. So right here, for example, so people can cross the road and get onto the keys to walk. I of course want to stay on theme for this island. So I'm thinking we put the international trading building in. It's a super tall building, so it definitely takes the attention. And even if you don't work here, it'll be a sort of area to visit when we put some paths and park assets around it. A little spoiler here, I'm putting in the park district and I'll plop in some park assets as well. I will actually remove this later in the episodes as I didn't like the idea of this being a park. I want it to look nice here, but it doesn't need to be a park for that. So as you can see here, I've put in a bunch of park assets. I think it just clutters the space a bit too much, so I will delete those later. I think the general park assets make it look a bit standard. This doesn't look any different from the parks we have in central Rosenberg, so this island doesn't look as spectacular as it could have been. We will get to decorating later and then I end up changing my mind. I'm connecting up the main road through this financial district to the highway here. I don't remember if I mentioned it when I put in this highway, but I want this to be a sort of urban highway. I know that down the line we will need a sort of central road to carry loads of traffic into town, and I'm thinking that this urban highway could be the way to do it. Now that I'm using it to make a connection, I think we need to formalize this as a true highway with two separated roads. We won't do that this episode, but I think we may need a road updating episode for the next one. In the meantime, I've used the tree and biking roads to go around the artificial lake. I've chosen to give it a fair bit of green space between the zoning tiles and the key, so we can get a nice path in there. I think I should make this curved road the IT district. I think it's going to be great to have this artificial pond with those IT skyscrapers around it. Before we start zoning though, I don't want to maximize the zoning squares here, so I'll put something in like this. And this is an odd space, but that actually allows us to put in a skyscraper that is not too tall, but would fit in well with the IT district in terms of height. We can also choose one that has a bit of a bigger footprint than a 4x4, as we do have the space here. I'm thinking this Marshall Tower, it's just under 150 meters tall, which is just about the same height as the stock district, so it looks quite good to me. I think the IT offices will be just a bit taller than this one, so it should look like a gradual increase of height and density. I'll pop that in right there. The best thing about this skyscraper pack is, first of all, that we finally have actual tall buildings, but the second best thing is that some of these skyscrapers actually come in pairs, and I think the residential island towers even come with the four of them. I want to make use of that option, so let me add a pair of skyscrapers on this intersection right here. 
This building is one embarcadero. It's just over 150 meters tall and it has a little friend, which is one Montgomery and it's around 90 meters. I like that these buildings become a lot more playful as they match but are different in height. It's an easy way to tie in the blocks and create vertical diversity. Looking at this area from above, I really like the individual buildings that we've put in so far. I don't think I need to put in more skyscraper buildings, so I feel like this is an appropriate time to move on to zoning. Right here I am putting in just regular offices. This entire area will obviously be really office heavy and that's perfect timing as we do have pretty high industrial demand so we can put in a bunch of zoning and it'll probably immediately start filling up. Of course I do want to put in some commercial options as well. I don't always like the commercial options as I think the commercial zoning here should be heavy on the restaurants and the pubs, not so much clothing shops. So we will have to be critical of the sort of commercial stuff we'll allow here. Yeah, and I'm not a big fan of these office buildings coming in. They're not really tall enough and they look more like office buildings you would see outside of town. I'm thinking we're better off if we put in the wall-to-wall -wall office buildings, so let's give that a try. While we wait for that, I will put in this IT district on the curved road. And as we zone everything in, let's pay some attention to these paths behind the buildings as well. I want to add this bridge over the pond to supply that pedestrian connection. And let's wait for some of this to zone first. As we're waiting, let's put in a couple of assets here onto the pond before everything needs to be demolished again. I'll put in these piers and a marina, which will probably be more of a restaurant than an actual marina. Although it would be quite cool to take a boat ride around the International Trading Building. Oh, I forgot these assets actually need regular roads. So I'll put in this one unit road with no zoning on it so we don't disturb the IT building zoning. And let's take a quick look at this already. I really like the way this looks. Let's check back in once everything's zoned so we can start decorating. I'm looking at this area and I don't like the way it looks. It's so generic, like I said before, like a regular park. So I'm going to delete nearly all of it. However, I do want a park in this area. I just don't think that this island is the place where that park should go. I'm thinking we move it to this grass patch to the right next to the main road. It seems just perfect to go here. It will still offer a direct park connection to the offices around this area and a park is not super tall so people from the main road will be able to have a good look at the trade building as they're passing through. I think this solution will work a lot better for us so let's get that sorted out. This park is not super huge so I will stick with one simple loop. Everything will be fenced off and I will make the fence go around this guy's scraper right here. As for the assets in here, I will add the plaza, the cafe, some gazebos. And maybe it's a bit odd to add a trampoline park and climbing frame here, but we will eventually add residential here, probably still this episode. So we also need to cater a bit to the younger children in this area, even though they might not be many. Let's bush this place off. This main road to the left here will eventually be pretty busy, I think. So let's put in a dense pack of trees so it won't feel too much like you're in an urban area. We pop this park in in record time speeds. Let's continue to detail the rest of this area by doing some last bits of zoning and roads and perfecting and landscaping the rest of the district. I'm popping in some high density commercial here and similarly to the office buildings we'll have a good look when this is all zoned in and check whether it feels like those buildings belong here. And I just love this big long bridge in between these high density buildings. It's just so great. It feels grand, a bit excessive because why the hell did we put a pond here? I don't know, it just feels decadent and we have the money, so we've put a pond in here. Who cares? And I'm really starting to enjoy this area. I just love the way this looks from above. 
Now let's get into what I admittedly am dreading a bit. This is quite a big area to landscape and I know myself I get distracted and bored quite fast so this will be a challenge to give everything the proper treatment but I'll try my best. This area looks really good from a bird's eye view but I want this to feel special on street level as well so let's give it a go. The International Trading Building has been without electricity this entire time. I was hoping it would at one point just jump power with everything we're building around it, but I will have to scoot in some gazebos in a strategic manner to have the power jump. And now it's time to plop in loads of trees. Let's put our rocky montage on. Here we go. Oh my, I have detailed a lot of these areas. There's trees and fancy non-native trees in this area. There's rocks, paths, assets, parks, and loads of areas of interest to go to. I'm really happy with the way this turned out. I don't know about you guys, but before I started landscaping, I liked the area we had built so far, but it didn't really yet feel super decadent. Now with all the detailing, it feels a lot better in my opinion. I feel like this is not completely done yet, but I'm happy to leave this here for now. We'll be back in this area next episode to do some public transport additions, so we might add a couple of things here and there at that later moment. Rome wasn't built in a day either, so neither was Rosenberg. As for the last things we will do, I will sneak in a residential area right here. I was doubting on if we needed it, but I think it makes loads of sense to add in a residential district right here. We should actually get some hotels near this area as well, but I'm first focusing on the local population that may be working here and needs a place close by to live. And this district, you just know it's going to be expensive. It has a grand view of the financial district. It's super central and there's loads of amenities like parks and piers around. So let's make it look a bit nice as well by giving it the high tech policy. I'm choosing to not zone this in super dense. There will be some open spaces as I just prefer that much more over square to square zoning. And some of those spots we may put in low density commercial shops, which will be some corner shops or 7-Elevens. Hmm, okay, I like these two big flats. I feel like they're really fitting, but these small ones I'm not really a big fan of. They may upgrade and become nicer flats, but we need something a bit more grand. And of course, those old city center buildings are still popping up. I don't want them to zone anywhere in town except for where I've placed them manually, but I cannot get a grip on not having them zone elsewhere. So if anyone knows how to fix that in Rico, do let me know. I feel like a proud mother having a look at their child. <laughs> I'm actually really impressed that I've put in such a big district with the lion's share of detailing done as well in this short amount of time. I want to honor the planner of this district by putting in their last name. I've just 
made up this last name. It's now Williamson Spark. So I'm just now making it up, but Eleanor Williamson is a legendary planner in Rosenberg. And she is the one who put the city on the map by designing this amazing canal and pond for the business districts. We still have some demands for offices, so let's put in a couple on this key right here. And we need some paths so the people from the trading building can take the short route into Williamson's Park. Let's really tie up the last loose ends. We could use some corner shops here in the residential area and I'll make them organic produce and I'm hoping it will give us some of the hipster cafes and not the electrical charging parking lots. We'll add some more offices right here. And I think this is the right moment to step away from the district. Let's take a look at everything we've built so far. I really enjoyed building this financial district. It looks modern and like a place to visit, even if you don't work around here. I love the detailing and the roomy open feel of this place. Let me know if you agree as well. I honestly would love to live in this little residential district right here. This place doesn't feel entirely done yet, but we will be back here in the next episode to finish up some last things, such as the public transport options, and we'll probably put in some more residential if the demand is there. I'm already looking forward to the next one. I hope to see you there as well. Bye bye!